have so many good things to, tell, to say about the apostle. It takes more than one person, That's right? right. Okay. Okay. I'm just learning, you know. I'm good in the secular world, but I'm learning right. how to be better right. in the spiritual world. So I think that's something maybe I can share and since you're on this earth, if you're doing better in your financial lives, I think that's going to turn around and let you do better in your spiritual lives. Yeah. Because the reason why a lot of us don't or can't take the time to worship the Lord and praise the Lord, as Evangelist showed us, is because we have so much on our minds. Right. And what we have on our minds is related to debt. Yeah. It's related to bills. Right. You know, your boss says, you got to stay and work a double shift. I'm going to play golf. Yeah. And you can't tell him to go where you want him to go <laughs> because you need that job. <laughs> that job means just over broke, isn't that right? right. So yeah. we want to right. listen to the word. If you remember those of you that were blessed yesterday, an apostle talked about wow. purpose being power. Yes. Yes. Purpose being yes. out. Yes. And I tell you how I got to meet the apostle. I got a calling from Sarah. Okay. His evangelist Sarah. Disappeared on me. I'm nervous now. She left. <laughs> and uh, she said, um, We have Apostle McKinney and his family coming up. We don't have a place for him to stay. And can you help us? Well, the Lord's blessed us with a lot of stuff. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But the stuff is not important unless you use it to enrich the lives of other people. If you don't use it to enrich the lives of other people, you won't have it very long. Okay. And when you give it away, where did the deacon? Did he go? Then, the deacon clearly said, give yourself away. And when you give yourself away, I guarantee you to come back to you way more. Way more than what you gave away. Amen. You ever have somebody say, give me an offer? So you give a dollar. Right? And then that weekend you go to a party and you spend $30. That's right. Oh, that's and you could have gave that offer for $30. Right. And you'd have gone to that party and somebody would have gave you a trip to Hawaii. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's right. That's right. Oh, you give that dollar way you go to the party you ain't looking for nobody and you spend your thirty dollars and now you're down thirty one dollars you didn't get a trip to Hawaii so what happened was they said uh, can you help us well I didn't know Apostle McKinney didn't know the family and I said of course I can help you and why are you obligated to enrich the lives of other people it's not for Apostle McKinney it's not for First Lady. It's not for Evangelist Lachey. Not for Pastor Piper. I'm trying to get in! I am trying to get in! God gave you assets to see what you're going to do with them. Are you going to worship the assets? Or are you going to worship the Lord? And I'm trying to get in. So I'm trying to give it away. And hopefully I can get in. I'm not in. Some of y'all out there think you're in. You fooling yourself. You ain't in till you're in. And you don't make the call. Only God makes the call when you get in. So on my deathbed, I'm going to be giving it away. Because I want to get in. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so all of a sudden after it worked out, because the place that the apostle stayed, you can't get in unless you book it a year in advance. And I said, I need a place for Apostle McKinney. And they said, oh, yes, we have. I said, that's kind of scary. The secular world don't work like that. See? So that was my first introduction. This ain't the secular world we're working with here. Because they had plenty of space for Apostle McKinney and his family. So then, all of a sudden, Sister Sarah said, well, you know, why don't you, why don't you come? I think you'll enjoy it. You know, she's so soft spoken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kill you with kind. You know? And my wife and I and my son, because he's he we teach him to be entrepreneurial. We got nine businesses. So I don't know about y'all, but if you don't work your own business, you don't make no money. That's right. Right? And I'm always doing something. 
Yes, you know, there's daycare owner right there. You know, that's right. That's right. So she know what I'm talking about. So I said to myself, I don't know if I got four hours to come and listen to somebody that just wants some money. That's right. Because you, know? you know how a lot of these ministers are. Right. Oh, they're smooth. Oh, they talk a good game. And boy, them pockets are out and they drive off in those Mercedes and those Cadillacs and those Escalades. And you say to yourself, where did the money go? Uh -huh. Who knows? That's it. Okay, so I thought to myself, well, I don't know if I want to come and listen to somebody and give up my money so he can live in a better house or something, yeah. you know? Yeah. But then Sam called me. You know, Prophet Sam called me and said, Prosco, he said, I think you ought to come. I think you, you're going to get a lot out of it. <laughs> now think about it. That's two people. Jesus. I don't need the apostle to call me. God sent two messages. You need to be there. That's right. So I said, honey, she wasn't feeling well. I said, I'm going to go. Yeah. And you, you got my number. Give me a call. I can always leave, but I got to be there. Yeah. Amen. And so I showed up. And this young lady here, she says she's 92 years old. Yeah. You know she's not 92. I think she's 29. <laughs> It when we celebrated her birthday, I went along with it. You know, all of her children said the same thing. She's 92. But God gonna get her, because she's not 92. Look out. Look out. And, and I call her Mama Claire, and Mama Claire looked at me, didn't know me. Nobody in the room knew me except one lady. She's not here tonight. But nobody else knew me except Sam and Sarah. And Mama Claire said, young man, now, you know I like that. Come on. I'm 60 years old. I like that. Ain't too many people call me young man. And she said, young man, come on. Sit down next to me. I said, what? She don't know me. Right? I could be a gangster. I could be a drug dealer. I could be waiting for the connection to get it. But she looked in my eyes and she just said, sit down next to me. And I sat down to her for the rest of the entire revival. And I'm telling you, when the man of God walked through that door, I said, praise the Lord. I said, this is the real deal. The real deal. You're not saying the real things. The real deal. What you see is what you get. And we got more than we could have ever expected. And so with that, a group of us said, well, let's try and do this again. I mean, you've got to strike while the iron is hot. And there's a lot of people out there need some hot irons. Right? We know that. We know that need some hot irons. Me included. That's what I'm trying to get in. And so I said, let's try and get the apostle back.